Hey guys, welcome to Port Jervis, New York, and welcome to the 2020 BMW X3 M. Today in the Fastlane car, we're going over all the really cool things that you want to see. This X3 M competition has a 510 horsepower, three liter straight six, but it has two different exhaust modes. It's got a quiet mode, which sounds like this. And then if I push this little button here on the console, it actually opens up a valve in the exhaust system and it sounds like this. And check this out guys, it will actually let me rev the engine all the way up towards redline. To keep that three liter straight six cool, BMW has had to do a lot of crafting to the front end of the X3 here. And what's really neat is that all these vents, they're all real and they all hide radiators behind them. There's a lot of functionality going on in the front of this vehicle. Of course, if you're gonna build a new M car, you're gonna have to make it special on the inside as well. BMW has delivered. You've got carbon fiber across the dashboard here, the M steering wheel, you have an M shifter, and of course in this competition, these M sport seats. In fact, they've gone even as far as to stitch the M stripes into the floor mat down here. So in 35 years, when people are fully restoring their X3Ms to factory original condition, how much do you want to bet these floor mats with the M stripes are going to cost? I'm going to say a lot of money. Another very thoughtful feature I'm seeing more and more of are the parking lamps on this X3M. You see it's very common in Europe where if you park on the side of the road at night, say to go into the shops, you'll turn on only the left parking lamps to alert people which side of the road you're on. You can also do the same with only the right parking lamps. So to do that on this X3M, I push the button for the left side or the button for the right side and it will only turn the parking lamps on on that given side. So what's it like to drive the X3M competition? Well, in a lot of ways, it's like driving any other X3 because the view out the front is pretty similar. The interior, you know, minus the steering wheel and the carbon fiber and some badging is pretty much the same design. The iDrive is basically the same. However, that's kind of where the similarities end because you also have 510 horsepower. 510 horsepower in a BMW X3. Think about that number, which means when you give it even a little bit of welly, Jesus, it's just so fast. On your standard X3 or X4, you probably have a Comfort Sport Sport Plus setting. Well, on the M, you've got a few more than that. You've got three different settings for your throttle, three different settings for your suspension, three different settings for your steering, three different settings for your transmission and a few different settings for your traction control. So it can be very overwhelming. Luckily, BMW has given you a shortcut with the M1 and M2 buttons. Now these are programmable, but what they let you do is simply just select M1. I've got it all set up so it goes into sport suspension, sport steering, sport throttle, and then I'm good to go. I don't have to go fuss around with 14 different settings. Now you're probably thinking that this three liter straight six is borrowed from the X3 M40i but you'd be incorrect in thinking that because this engine in the X3M actually has twin turbos versus the single turbo in that engine. You'll also see under here some cool things. First of all, you have the double pole release with the twin hood latches like you find on BMWs nowadays. That's a cool little easy and safe way to get the hood open. And plus check this out, if you look at this engine cover, they actually had to incorporate a cutout in it to allow the strut brace to pass through. Another nice feature is that if you go to open the hood while the engine is hot, it'll actually give you a warning. Engine compartment hot, open carefully. That's a nice touch. If you're buying this BMW M4 Performance, and I assume you probably would be, then you're gonna have to live with some extra cost associated with ownership. For example, these tires. These are Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, and they're staggered so you can't rotate them. In the rear here, you've got 265 width tires. In the front, 255. You've probably heard me say this word a lot today, competition. 
Now there are two flavors of X3M, the standard and the competition. The competition is going to cost you about $7,000 more, but it does give you blacked out exhaust there, standard 21 inch wheels, some more black accents down the side. In the front, the kidney grills are also completely blacked out. The standard one would have little chrome bits within. Uh, on the interior, it gives you competition badging. So there along the door sill, even in the center console. But most importantly, it gives you an additional 30 horsepower or so because the standard X3M develops 480-ish horsepower. This one is 510. They both make 442 pound-feet of torque. And I talked to the engineer. I asked him where that additional power came from, and it's largely engine tuning, so software. BMW says that the X3M competition, this one will do zero to 60 in about 4.1 seconds. And even though this has a traditional eight-speed automatic with a torque converter, it doesn't like it doesn't matter because the transmission shifts so fast when you put it onto its most aggressive setting. Here's a little bit of footage of me scaring the heck out of myself around a track in this car's cousin, the X4M competition. say is that you have three different suspension modes. You have a comfort, a sport, and a sport plus. And for American roads, when you're just cruising along on the highway, the comfort is not comfortable enough. And I know that this is the M in the competition, but it just, I really want there to be a bigger variation between sport and comfort. Because I'm fine having that firm suspension on sport, that's great. You dialed it up to sport mode, you're ready to have fun in the canyons or on the track. When I put it into comfort mode, I want it to be comfortable, you know what I mean? One of my favorite features in this M model is the shifter, which is actually different from the standard shifter. And I like it so much, not because of the cool design with the stripe down the side and the M on it, but because it actually has specific positions. Now the standard BMW shifter always returns to the middle, regardless what gear you're going into. However, this one, check this out. I can go into reverse and it stays in that position. So it's easy to know if I'm in reverse or not. And then drive is just a simple tap over to the right. It's fast, easy, and much cleaner to use than a lot of the other BMW systems. This vehicle actually shares several components with its big brother, the M5. Now one of those things happens to be the red start button, which is a nice touch. What's the other thing? Oh yeah, the drivetrain. So this shares the majority of its underpinnings, at least in terms of driveline, with the M5. So it's gonna be pretty stout. It also means that it can distribute torque 100% to the rear. So it's a rear bias system and it's constantly figuring out, reading the road terrain, reading conditions to determine what wheel needs power and when. There is one button in this cabin that doesn't belong uh, whatsoever. And that of course is the hill descent control button. I'm not exactly sure why it's there because this car is never gonna see off road ever on 21s and Pilot's Sport 4S tires, but it is there, which is kind of funny. So this back seat is actually pretty decent too. I don't have the same aggressive buckets like I do up front. So if you're gonna go fast, make sure you're sitting up front, but check this out. I actually have a little lever down here that lets me recline the seats a little bit. I of course have the shades as well on the windows. The big panoramic sunroof on this one also helps let some light in here. Really good headroom. Yeah, great place to spend time and even heated rear seats. All right, let's see if it passes the gas cap test. So it does have a gas cap on a string. It's not capless. Um, of course, that could flop around and scratch the paint, but it's a total pass because check this out. It's got the little holder so I can fill up and not lose the gas cap, which I would do a lot otherwise. So easy pass. The one thing that's kind of funny is I have this M steering wheel and it's uh, not power adjustable. And I was talking to one of the engineers and he said it was to save weight. But you know, this is a luxurious SUV with heated rear seats. So it's kind of funny that they left the <laughs> non-power adjustable steering wheel in place. Let's check out the trunk space. I have the classic M key here. Push and hold the button and there it goes. And it's actually really decent. Now there are two versions of M that just came out. There's of course the X3M and the X4M and they both ride on the same platform. Oh look, even a little power outlet back here. They both ride on the same platform, but the shaping of the rear end is 
completely different. So the X3 has this more traditional roof line, the X4 is more of a coupe-like design. I actually really like one feature on this iDrive system. So I have this row of presets down the dash and you're probably thinking, oh, for the radio. Well, you can actually set them to do whatever you want. So I can just hover my finger over any of them and it'll tell me what's set into each number. So it may be navigation, it may be radio, it might be different destinations. It's pretty cool that I can just simply hover my finger over and then when I click it, it actually goes to that destination, for example, which is a, a really cool thing. This X3 has easily the best camera system I've ever seen in any vehicle. It is incredible how it works. So, first of all, of course it has a backup camera, and of course it has a 360 degree camera, but it goes way beyond that because I actually have a virtual animation of the car, and I can circle around the car, full 360 around the car, using these little camera buttons here. It's almost like a video game, plus it's really cool when you actually go to back up, you see the steering wheels turn, and when you move, even the wheels themselves turn. It's almost surreal, it's like watching yourself in third person. Um, I can also select a few different other modes, so I can put it on auto and it will recommend what the best angle is, and even when I have it on auto from the front camera, the front camera turns with the steering wheel. It's just such an advanced camera system. Of course, I've got the rear three quarters I can look at, and I even have a car wash mode, which zooms in on the front and lets me see exactly where my tires are going into the car wash. Just a berserkly good camera system. big thank you to BMW for flying me out to New York and letting me experience the X3 and X4M and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you ready for the small crossover high performance vehicles? Because I think in the near future there's going to be a lot more coming and if they're anything like this 510 horsepower monster, I don't think we have, Jesus, I don't think we have much to to be worried about. As always, I'm Tommy with TFL Car. Go back to tflcar.com for more news, views, and real world reviews.